Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection April 4, 2023 Tuesday The Holy Week We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 1 to 6. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me. Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain, and for nothing, uselessly, spent my strength. Yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken who formed me as his servant from the womb that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm, Psalms chapter 71 verse 1 to 2, 3 to 4a, 5ab to 6ab, 15 and 17. Let our response be, I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice rescue me, and deliver me. Incline your ear to me, and save me. Response. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock of refuge. A stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. Oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. Response. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord. My trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. Response. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice. Day by day your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. Response. I will sing of your salvation. Verse before the Gospel. Hail to you, our King obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. Gospel Reading A Reciting from the Holy Gospel according to John John chapter 13 verse 21 to 33 and 36 to 38 Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen. Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, 
by what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once. And it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen. I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel The Demon of Assidia Assidia is defined as a state of restlessness and inability either to work or to pray. It is an awful combination of weariness, sadness, and a lack of purposefulness. It robs a person of their joy. This condition was sometimes found among monks and other ascetics who maintained a solitary life. Is this what Jesus experienced on the night he was betrayed? Not at all. But I suspect Peter did, somewhat. Specifically when he could not keep watch. Keep his eyes open for an hour. The disciples appeared to be in a daze after the Lord explained to them the brutal fact that one of their own would betray him. How can this be? Surely it isn't I, Lord. What is he talking about? Judas must have left to buy some food. They became lifeless, speechless, and listless, as if life had been sucked out of them. They may even have been walking and pacing up and down. Can we blame them? After all, their lives were about to be turned upside down and emptied of all they knew. That is the meaning and purpose they had acquired through Jesus Christ. What would the world think of them? Would they be considered disciples or simple buffoons? We know what the Pharisees, the pillars of Judaism, thought of them as they were actively hunting them down to destroy them. No longer would they be considered friends or fishermen, but criminals and enemies of the state. Do I feel lost? Like nobody cares? Have I lost the joy and excitement of living? I love to go watch an exciting movie with an awesome middle part. I can watch a movie and enjoy one with a fair beginning and ending. But I can't enjoy a movie with a lousy middle part. For middle part is where things or people come together to shatter. Where the music switches from C major to C minor. And where the lights have been turned off. I need to be reminded of these exciting and scary times when I am going through troubling and terrifying times. How will this turn out? What will happen next? Will anything good come from this? Will I make it out of here? Will my pain go away? Will I ever be loved again? Will I get my faith back? It's a lot easier to work with machines than with people. Machines are predictable. People can get so complicated. Machines are very reliable and dependable. People, not so much. And when it comes to breaking down, hands down, machines are easier to fix. They don't hide their problems. People do, and we do a good of it. It's a lot easier to please God than it is to please people. God is very predictable. We know where he stands on many issues, and he never budges. People, on the other hand, will stand behind you one moment and then confront you the next. God is a father. He is not a mechanic. He doesn't work on cars. He works on us. 
He doesn't occupy his time spinning worlds. He occupies it with his children. And this is a full-time job. Tough times are an essential ingredient for grace-filled endings. Just like truth is an essential ingredient for great relationships and love is an essential ingredient for happiness. Although none of us want to experience these awful times, they are what they were cut out to be. Opportunities to cut out, prune, dig, sharpen, narrow, distinguish, define who we are. The Remedy Acidia is a temptation, and the great danger of this temptation lies in the giving into it. Don't give in. Don't rewrite God's ending by sinning. When you feel gloomy, rebel. When you feel worthless, revolt. When you feel lonely or abandoned or forgotten, then reach out. Life was never meant to be forsaken. It was always meant to be grasped by the hand of God. Peter did the opposite of what he felt and asked for forgiveness. Judas did exactly what he felt and hung himself. Faith is what saved Peter. Feelings are what killed Judas. Do the opposite of what you feel like doing as long as what you do is right, good and holy. And only then, will you have a hand to hold on to.